Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Wishing for Love, and I'm gonna be sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are, <clears throat> excuse me, titanium white, deep yellow, Mars black, purple violet, and burnt sienna, which I typically call rust. Um, so those are the colors I'm using. You can switch them up if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number seven round synthetic brush, and a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using just black paint. So I am just loading my brush with black paint. I'm gonna be just covering the canvas with any type of brush stroke. I typically will just go kind of left to right with it. When I get to the edges or the sides of my canvas, you might see that I go vertical with it up and down, but you can really apply black paint in whatever type of brush stroke that you want because it covers really well. And by the time it dries, you won't detect the brush strokes. So you can go, you know, I, I like to sometimes when I'm doing the black, go up and down around the edges. So that way I ensure that I get all the way to the edges. You can even paint the sides of your canvas, like along the exterior edge of it. That'll give it a nice professional look to it, like it's all completely done. But whatever method is easiest for you to just get a nice solid coverage of the black on here is totally fine. You can even use a pre-primed canvas, that would mean, or a pre-primed black canvas, that would mean that your the canvas already comes with a, a coat of black, what looks like paint, but it's black primer on it. Those are great because it, of course, is a shortcut in order to um, start with this really dark background. However, they are coated in the factory to, with a primer, which is designed to um, help your paint adhere to the canvas. It's not designed to be the final layer of the painting. So if you do choose to use a black primer canvas, you'll want to make sure that you um, paint over the whole thing 100% with another color or that you use a clear coat of some, of some sort as a final step to lock in all of the um, all the primer underneath a nice clear coat so it will age properly if it's just the primer it tends to age getting dirty or you know changing colors and things of that nature so you'll want to have that clear coat on top of it if you're not painting um, if, if you're not putting paint all over it. And then what I like to do is I just go back and forth to make sure that I have a nice um, even thickness on my paint. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this background done, 
you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the floor and our first layer of the heart, the smoky heart that we're gonna be putting in. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are purple, black, and white. But I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is nice and dry. It'll be an easier process for you if you do that. So this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So the process to this is I want the floor to be just look like it's illuminated by perhaps the the lantern that we're going to be putting on, the magic lantern that we're going to be putting on. So I don't want to give it a whole lot of light per se, but I do want there to be some sort of um, color on there so we can have a nice shadow underneath the lantern and something that will be complementary to the smoky heart that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to be using the purple to get the entire area into shape and then I'm going to be using white with maybe a little bit of black so it has a grayish tone to give a lighter kind of area in the middle. I'm also going to be using mostly purple to get the area of my heart on here so it looks nice and smoky and then we'll use a tiny bit of black and white like a grayish tone to give it this airiness to it. My purple is very transparent or see-through so it's going to look kind of vibrant when I first put it on there and then it will get darker and darker as it dries which is why I will also use a little white at times to make it a little bit more vibrant. But I'm going to just start with purple right now. So I have purple on my brush. I'm going to put my big area for my floor in place. So I'm just going to be kind of using this left to right type of brush stroke. I want it to go almost all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm about four inches up on this right hand side, which is about a quarter of the way. So if you're working with a different size canvas, you can kind of find your halfway point up or down, and then you're gonna start maybe a quarter, half the distance from there to the bottom is where I have this um, floor kind of starting. And I'm just having an, a soft line where it, it, where it meets the background. So I'm just kind of um, going back and forth, left to right, almost crossing over that black area. I'm stopping right about here, which is about uh, you know, two or three inches from the edge of my canvas. So this way I have um, you know, it kind of fading off into the darkness. So while that's kind of sitting for a minute, I don't need it perfect. I just want it something to start the process. While that's kind of sit sitting and drying a little bit, I'm gonna start my smoky area. So I'm gonna find about the center of my canvas, up and down, halfway, left to right, halfway. So somewhere about here. And I'm going to put my my heart shape in place this is where it's going to come out of the lantern i've got it kind of coming up and down this will be uh like the point or the bottom part of my heart you can really have your heart in kind of any shape that you want but i'm going to come maybe up and to the left of here so up and maybe a little bit to the left and i'm just really going to be applying or creating this shape with um, a messy like circular type of brush stroke again most of this is going to almost like disappear as it dries on top of that background but this at least kind of just gets me started allows me to understand where i want it to go you can even just kind of pull a little bit of it out to the sides and into um, the center of the heart because again a lot of it's going to disappear as it dries but it, this just starts the process for us so what, while that's kind of settling a little bit, I'm gonna go back down into here. Without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. I don't need a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm gonna start on the inside of this area and just kind of go back and forth, left to right, and get this to blend out into that purpley, um, the darker purple region. So I'm just getting a little bit of a gradient to happen in the center of here. I'm not using a lot of pressure on my brush. I'm really just using it very lightly so I can get these colors to um, blend into one another without, without having to do much um, work to get them to do that. I am not pushing my brush hard. So 
I am using a thin bodied student grade paint which tends to have a lot of fluidity to it. So it allows it to stay wet a little bit longer and allows me to kind of keep working it and getting it to move around and blend into one another. And while it's drying, I work it and I'm kind of spreading out that light area to as far as I want it to go. I will, if this doesn't, um, if this turns out a little bit darker than I had planned, I may add a touch more white into it. But while that's settling, I go back up into here with the same thought process. So dirty brush, just added a little bit of white paint to my brush. This is still a little wet, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to just start maneuvering this bit of white paint throughout the purple paint. So this way I'm going to have these different values. It'll be lighter and darker in some areas than other areas. You can bring some of this out into the um, into the larger area over into here. I just want it to be very kind of faint and dissipated a little bit. If I feel I'm running out of paint, I just pick up a little bit of more white. If your purple is totally dry at this point, you can certainly pick up a touch more of the purple as well. But if you still have, I have little wet spots left so I'm going to be utilizing those to create this bit of um, airiness to it and I'm just kind of enhancing this heart type of shape again knowing that it will still get a little bit darker as it dries but just kind of pulling this out a little bit I want that interior part of the heart to be kind of the most dominant. So I have some lighter spots in through there. That's looking pretty good to me. And then what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of white and black into the center. I want it to be a little bit grayer. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just working with my dirty brush. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of white and a teeny tiny bit of black, like just a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush with that white. So this is going to allow me to add a little bit more lightness and with a little bit of gray tone in it right into this um, kind of center type of area for the spot on the floor. And again, just looking to make sure it looks like there's a nice illuminated spot on that floor. And I'm not gonna do it to my, um, my cloud my smokiness because I know that I'm going to be incorporating some more distinct kind of um, pieces of the smoke in through there later so I'm going to hold off on making that any brighter at this point and this is looking pretty good to me so I think I'm going to call it you can certainly play with yours just as much as you want I do recommend kind of waiting for it to dry to see if you want to add any more um, dimension to it and then we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your floor and your first layer of your smoke done, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our magic lantern. I'm gonna be using my chalk and I'm gonna be giving you a couple of markers. We'll connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a, a great lantern that we'll be able to color in later. We're not gonna be doing any fine-tuned detail, just gonna give ourselves a nice basic shape. So the lantern that I'm drawing is out of my head. Um, I created it just based on the elements that I wanted to have in my lantern, but you can certainly bend this, twist it, shape it into whatever style of lantern that you would like. Um, I'm gonna give you some nice guide so that you can follow and then if you want to make it taller or shorter or have more decorative elements on it you certainly can do that. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to start by drawing a vertical line. I'm going to have my lantern sitting in this vicinity over here. I'm going to have the top of it is going to be a little bit higher than my halfway mark and the bottom of it is going to come almost down to the bottom of my canvas. I've got um, this vertical line that we're making is going to be about a third of the way in my canvas. So if this is like halfway in my canvas, I'm going to have this line probably somewhere in this vicinity. So the height of my lantern, if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, I'm about two or three inches above that. So I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker where I want the top of my lantern to be. 
you could use a ruler or a brush or something to see how far away from the edge of your canvas you made this. Ooh, this is almost exactly the size of my small brush. So you could say, okay, here's my marker. I made it about this far away from the edge of my canvas. And then I want you to come straight down from that and do another marker at about the same distance from the edge of your canvas, about an inch and a half to two inches above or from the bottom of your canvas. So somewhere in through here. Then we're gonna just connect those with a vertical line. It does not have to be perfectly straight. This is just gonna help you um, in making the, the shapes to this particular object. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about the halfway mark between the bottom and the top of this. So somewhere in this vicinity, give myself a little bit of a marker. And then I'm gonna come about halfway between here and the bottom of that and make myself another marker. So these are gonna help us to draw a nice shape for the, um, for the interior of it. On the left hand side, I'm gonna find where my spout is gonna go. So my spout is gonna be around here where my smoke is coming. So I'm gonna make myself a little marker at the right side of that spout, something like this. Yours might be positioned differently, um, but wherever yours is positioned, you can make a marker in through there. Then on the right side of this line, I'm gonna come almost equal distance. So if I came out here, maybe two and a half to three inches, I'm gonna go on this uh, approximately the same on the right hand side. It doesn't have to be exact. It can really be kind of free forming, something like that. I'm gonna connect here to here to here with an arcing type of line. So something like this, and then just bring it up into here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this, this dot or this corner to this line, to this corner. So we're gonna have another swooping kind of um, carefree arcing type of line, something like this. And again, yours may not be exactly the same as mine. Mine, it looks like it's a little bit bigger on the left than the right, which is totally fine. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish my spout. So I'm gonna take from this little marker here, I'm gonna give myself a curved line like that and then I'm gonna bring it in a semi-circle like kind of an oval that's gonna have that smoke coming out of there. And then I'm gonna connect this spout to the edge of my um, lantern. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself on the right hand side, I'm gonna give myself like a little handle. So I'm gonna take from here. And again, this can be as decorative as you want. I'm gonna just bring this kind of up and around something like this. We'll worry about making it thicker and have more information later, but that's what I'm gonna do on that side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put what's gonna be my lid on here. So I know I need a little, um, little thing to open my lid. So somewhere in this vicinity here, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of an inward curve like that. And then I'm gonna come just up a little bit from, from here and I'm going to connect this, so I'm gonna come like this. I'm gonna connect it to somewhere over in this vicinity. So maybe just down a little bit from here with another kind of arcing type of line. So something like this would represent the, um, the lid. And then I'm gonna make myself a decorative kind of element from the top in through here. So what I'm gonna do is just do a series of um, like oval type of shapes to give myself equal um, decoration on the left and the right. You might find that you wanna do something a little bit different than mine. It doesn't have to be um, the same number of little decorations. I'm gonna do a, an oval something like this and then another one maybe a little bit um, deeper or longer down in through there. Then I'm gonna, so that's about as many decorative things that I'm gonna do. Um, then I'm just gonna kind of make this um, little mark and blend it in with my top. So something like that. And again, yours can certainly be whatever decorations that you want. I'm just decorating mine like that. And then I need the bottom to my, to my um, lantern. So from here, I'm gonna go over to the right, maybe about inch, inch and a half and up just a little bit and do the same thing on the left-hand side, over about an inch, inch and a half and then up just a little bit. Connect these two with a little bit of a curve in through there. And then I'm going to connect these outside corners 
to um, where it meets the base. So I'm going to come out to the right just a little bit, come straight down for a little while, and then just kind of curve it out, straight down for a little while on this side, and then just kind of curve it out. And it, the corners on this don't have to be perfect right now. We'll, we'll rectify that when we paint. And then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can fiddle with this all you want. You can put your piece of chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat of the lantern. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using burnt sienna and yellow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a mid-tone for the base coat so we can do highlights and shadows on top of it later and it'll be a nice complementary base tone for it. So what I'm in essence going to do is create a color that is between my burnt sienna and my yellow. So I'm just going to mix the two together. So if I have my burnt sienna in through here, I'm going to mix some of my yellow into it. It doesn't have to be um, the exact shade as mine. I'm just going for something that is kind of right in between the two of them. And then once you've got the shade of um, that rusty color that you want, we're really just going to paint in the entire thing. It's okay if you loo or paint over your chalk mark because we're going to be able to re-identify that with the edges. Um, we just really kind of had them on there as a tool for us to draw the um, the lantern with. And then I'm going to attempt to go right up to my chalk mark um, and paint over it all, but there might be areas that I decide I don't want to go all the way to the edge, and in which case I might leave some of that chalk mark visible and wait for the paint to dry and then just erase any remnants of the chalk that I might um, that I, if there's any left over it that I don't want. So I'm just kind of pulling this out, making sure I still have those little scalloped edges to it. And then I am, I might, um, depending on how this dries, I am going to want a pretty solid coat to it. So I may do a second coat after, um, after this dries. I might come back and just do a second coat so I can get rid of any streakiness that I may have. Um, but you might find that your paint covers better than mine does. You might have a thicker body paint that covers better and that you may not feel that you need or want the second coat on it, but um, it'll make my process a little bit easier as I add my highlights and my shadows later if I have a nice solid coat on here. So I'm going to apply it with a nice thin um, first coat and then if it if it dries in a manner that is a little bit too streaky for me I'll just add a second coat. When I get to the little handles in through here you can make these as thin or as wide as you want. So if you want them to have, be a little bit on the thicker side, you can just kind of push your brush a little bit firmer and that's going to widen that chalk line or widen the line so the um, piece of the lantern is a little bit wider. So I'm going to do the same thing with this little um, handle part out here. So I'm pushing my brush a little bit firmer so I can have um, a little bit of width to these to these lines. So just kind of putting my brush in the direction that I want and then kind of coming around this curve in a continual arcing motion. Um, so that way it looks nice and smooth around those edges and is nice and um, has a nice curve to it. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down the edges. Your edges don't have to be perfect at this point. Um, we will be, like I said, doing highlights and shadows and have a bunch more detail on um, this lantern. But if you're going for some clean lines right off the bat, um, you can just use a little bit more paint on your brush and just always make sure that it has moisture within the paint. That's going to give you those nice clean lines. So that's either a higher quantity of paint on your brush. It could be um, you want your, your paint a little bit more fluid so you could add a little bit of liquid medium to it or water or whatever your um, fluid choice is. And then I'm just going to kind of slow down around these edges again so I can get a nice clean um, edge to it. And then like I said, once I've got this, this first coat on, I'm going to let it dry. And if I want to do a second coat, I will. Um, and then we will 
be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat on in whatever intensity that you would like, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadow underneath our lantern and we're gonna finish our smoke. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black and white paint. I'm also gonna be using some water so I can have nice translucency to both of these elements. So what I'm gonna first do is do my shadow underneath my um, lantern. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of black paint and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush in my water and then I tap it off on my paper towel. So this is gonna give me moisture within my um, bristles. I'm gonna have my shadow pretty dark where it's meeting the lantern and then it's gonna kind of fade out. It'll take on kind of the, a similar shape to the lantern but more in like a dissipated kind of way. So I'm gonna start by just kind of underlining my lantern with this black watered down paint. I'm gonna move my canvas a little bit so I can, so I don't bump, don't bump into the back. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub it out. While it's still, I've got that moisture on my brush to help me out, I'm gonna put a little bit of this shadow over on the other side of the lantern. All the while I'm thinking, I want this to kind of take on a similar shape to the lantern um, from above. So I'm gonna just kind of bring keep kind of pulling it out, bringing it out with this moisture on my brush and bringing it out in what is representational to me as the, as the painter, as a kind of a shadow of that, um, any of the, the shape of that object from above. I think I need to reload my brush with a little bit more paint because I'm running out. So I did the same thing, black water, dabbed it on my paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I've got this as dark as I want it in through here before I start um, pulling it out. I'm gonna bring this, this will be like the neck of the, of the object, and then I'm just kind of rubbing it out. I just added a touch more water to my brush so I can make sure that I've got some soft edges in through here, and then I'll just bring it out in what appears to be a similar shape to me um, at, of the lantern up above. And you can certainly keep fiddling with this. You can make yours lighter or darker. If you went too heavy, you can certainly just um, add a little bit of water, more water to your canvas, and that can either pull it off or you can bring, uh, utilize some of that floor color to dull it down a little bit. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to be utilizing black, black, white, and water on my brush for my smoke. So I have black, white, and water on my brush right now. And I'm just going to be making this come out of my, um, out of the spout. And I want it to really just look super airy and have lots of translucency to it. So I'm gonna keep loading my brush with different variations of water and black and white so I can have these um, very airy type of marks that are coming out of the, um, of the spout to it. So sometimes you'll see I almost like turn it in a, in a curved type of manner. I might have some coming out over in through here, but my trick is really to have water on my brush so I can get these um, essence of these pieces of smoke to be really kind of transparent and translucent. I can even, while I have a little bit of that water on my brush, if I want any of this um, smokiness on the outside to look fuller or billow a little bit more, I can start rubbing it into the canvas. So if I want like an area like this to have a little bit more volume to it, I can put a little bit more white on my brush and just kind of pull it out in that rubbed type of manner. So you can, you know, have fun with exploring how much of this smokiness that you want to happen, but this is the time where you would really kind of accentuate the heart shape of this, um, of this 
symbol that we're, that we're doing coming out here. You could even, if you wanted to, you could certainly add a little bit more purple. Like I feel like I might want a little more purple. So I'm picking up some purple right now on my dirty brush. I feel like I want a little bit more in through here. So you've, I've got my, my white, my purple, my black, whatever works for you to kind of get this, this information. I'm getting the, the strongest part of the smoke to be kind of in the center. Um, or the brightest part, I should say, um, with the most white kind of down the center of that, um, of the trail of the smoke, so to speak, but definitely having some brighter areas um, and maybe that little bit of airiness maybe coming out of the actual center every now and again. So, you know, you might find that you want to do a whole bunch of layers on this. You might find that that one layer works for you. You might want to add more purple to it, whatever works for you. Feel free to just continue to have fun with this. And when you feel you've got it all nice and incorporated, maybe let it dry for a minute so you can kind of see if there's any adjusting that you want to do. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your smoke done and it's trailing as much as you want it to, you can um, wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the shadow areas within our lantern. So this will be all the areas along the bottom side of the lantern and anything, any area that we want to look like it's got a little bit of form and shape to. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, rust, or burnt sienna, and the um, tan, orangey color that we created for the base coat. So I've got my, my medium brush. I will never have a lot of paint on my brush, um, so I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and a little bit of burnt sienna in order to start this. I'm gonna do this big area first and I'm gonna have this dark area down in the bottom right hand side. You don't necessarily have to bring it all the way to the edge um, so this way it'll look like there might be some shine to it. I'm picking up a little bit more of my burnt sienna to get this to blend up and into that um, the original color that we had. So just kind of getting these two to blend in a little bit, picking up a little bit more of my burnt sienna so I can have maybe this bit of a darker area over on the back side of the, um, of the lantern and get it to fade into the um, main section over in through here. And I'm gonna put a little bit with the remnants of my brush in through here still picking up um, just my burnt sienna right now just to get these uh, two colors to talk well together and then once I've got them talking together as well as I want then I'm going to start picking up that base color um, on my dirty brush in order to get the the burnt sienna to blend in with it so as I progressively got lighter I just um, went from the black to the rust to this base color in order to get them to blend in with one another. And then I just kind of blend it out. And as you can see, my paint is a little bit lighter as it's wet. So I just know that, that it's gonna turn a little bit darker as it dries. So that's the biggest section. I am gonna put a little bit with the, I have a little bit of remnants on my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness in through here so this is just whatever I had remnants on my brush to give myself a little bit of a shadowy area up and through there. I'm going to reload with a little bit of black and burnt sienna right now to get a touch of a shadow on this back side of the stem of the um, lantern so something like this and then I'm just going to bring it down and maybe pull a little bit into this base as if it's catching a shadow from the big area of the um, of the main section of the of the um, lantern but I'm going to leave a little bit of that edge showing as a light edge so that way it tells the viewer maybe this is stuck out a little bit more. I'm going to pick up some of my mid-tone right now that tan color to get all of these to just kind of blend in a little bit with one another and we will be doing highlights also. I think I want a little bit more darkness in here picking up a little bit more of the rust and the black just to get make sure that it, we've got a nice shadow underneath here to definitely tell the story of this being 
uh, in the shadows from the from the object above it. So that's working out pretty well for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over to this handle area. I really just want a little bit of a shadow on the bottom side here, maybe here, um, maybe a little bit up and through there. So again, just black with my burnt sienna. I don't need much, just something down here that's going to tell the story of this being a little bit in the shadows. Even on here, we can put this, this might ha be having a shadow from the object above it. So I'm just kind of keeping that in my head as to where, where shadows might, you know, might be. Um, my chalk marks, I will get rid of in a little while, but right now just putting a little bit more black paint on my brush so I can get a little bit deeper shadow right in through here. And I don't necessarily need it to go all the way to the edge. Again, that'll show that there's a little bit of shine on them. Maybe I'll put a little bit of um, this darkness underneath here, but not a lot. I'm going to pick up some of my base color right now just to make sure these all talk to each other. So this was that medium tone just to get those to work well with each other. So now I'm going to kind of move into this upward decorative area. Um, my shadows are going to lie underneath each one of these little um, bump out parts and on the right hand side of them as well. So I'm going to put just a little bit of black and burnt sienna on my brush at the same time. This will take probably a little bit less blending um, and more kind of mark making. So I know that I want it underneath here, maybe pull it out just a little bit. So I'm thinking Underneath this ball, this is going to cast a shadow on the, sec on the next area underneath it. So something like this, something like this. And then I can um, I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna, and get it to blend a little bit, but I don't necessarily need it to blend a whole lot. Um, again, I will be getting rid of those chalk marks in, in a minute, but right now just concentrating on where I want these highlight or these shadowy areas to go. So that kind of takes care of that. And I don't really need much on here. I do want to kind of designate where my actual lid is going to go. So I'm going to pick up some of that black and burnt sienna. I want my lid to kind of be um, from here because this would, if you pull this with your thumb, the lid would open up. And then I'm going to designate how far over I want it to go. I think I want it to go like midway between here and here. So I'm just going to kind of draw myself this arcing kind of line. We had this originally when we were using our pencil, but your or our chalk, but yours might morph into something different. I'm just kind of giving myself a soft line here. This will be that little shadow underneath the um, lid. And then if you wanted any other little decorative bump out areas, you can certainly um, make some little marks in through here if you wanted there to be a little bit of bumpy areas that we'll, we'll put in later. I'm thinking that's pretty good. We're going to have a swirly thing going on in here that might have a little bit of shadow behind it, but I'll show you how to do that when we, when we put that on there. So we're actually going to be using our, um, our small brush for the next step. So once you've got, are well, we going to use our small brush? Yeah, let's use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our lantern with highlights and any decorative elements that we want to incorporate. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using yellow, white, black, rust, and perhaps... Um, that base, I'm sure I'm going to use that base tan color as well. I haven't come up with an official name for it yet. <laughs> we'll just call it our mid-tone rusty color. <laughs> so what I'm going to first do, I'm going to have some contour highlights on my lantern. Probably right in through here is going to be the main one that's going to show the roundness of this particular object. And then I'll have um, highlights on these little bump out areas. We'll have highlights maybe on this um, this little thumb handle, maybe a little bit on the top of here, on here, some down on the stand down here, and then we're going to have this decorative kind of scalloped information in the middle. And of course we need a highlight on our little lid here too. 
So I'm gonna start with the big highlight in through here. I've got my small brush. What I'm gonna do is I, I pre-mixed myself a light yellow color. So how I got to that was I used yellow with a little bit of white paint. This is going to give me a nice natural highlight um, without going fully white, um, which I like to preserve my white for later to have, or for the end to have the brightest of the bright highlights. So just a nice light yellow color. You do not need a lot of paint on your brush. I'm actually just kind of wiping it off on the side of my palette. I want this to be somewhere in this vicinity. I'm gonna put my highlight on, I'm gonna rub it out, and then I'll blend it into um, the neighboring area. So I've got my light yellow color. I'm bringing it all the way up in through here blending it out as much as I can by just kind of rubbing it out along the edges, keeping that center like the brightest of it, and then just kind of rubbing it out. I like to kind of rub out until I run out of the paint on my brush. So what that'll do is that'll dissipate, that'll allow this color to kind of dissipate as it's getting farther and farther away from that center. And then what I can do is I can pick up that base color, the medium tone, without washing my brush and get that bring that back in and get it to blend in with that um, center highlight. So you might have a little bit different of a technique um, to getting them to, to blend out, but sometimes just finding your own rhythm helps you to, helps you to get those, those highlighted type of areas um, done in an, easier, in an easier way. I just kind of keep picking up my base color in order to get this to blend out and work its way out into the, the darker regions. And if you feel like, I feel like I wanna blend it a little bit more, so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more of that light yellow, just to make sure that it's blended the way that I want to. And you can, of course, pick up the light yellow plus your base coat along the edges. So I just kinda of keep working it until it is blended in a way that, that makes me visually happy. And that's looking pretty pretty good to me. Maybe a, just a teeny tiny bit more right in this area here. Looks like I lifted the paint just a little bit in through there. And then once I've got that done, I can bring this, this um, thought process of this highlighted area. Let me just kind of get this to blend out just a little bit more. Um, I can bring this thought into like my upper area and my lower area. So I know that I've got this area as a nice highlighted part um, telling me that the maybe the light from the smoke or somewhere up above is giving me this kind of illumination on the left hand side. So I'm going to bring this light yellow up into these areas on the left hand side, something like this, and then I will blend those to the right. So I've got a little bright area on the left and then I just kind of blend it out towards the right. And if yours doesn't blend as smoothly as mine, that's okay, just pick up some of that mid-tone to get it to happen and that will work out. I can also just kind of take this light yellow or the remnants that I have on my brush and just pull it down into these little decorative um, pieces in through here, creating a nice highlight on those. I'm gonna um, utilize that light yellow on the top of my spout. So just a little bit of that light yellow right now is on my brush to um, create a bit of a highlight in through here and then a little bit of a, a blended highlight coming down this spout area in through here so it blends into the main area a little bit. I'm gonna put a nice bright highlight on the edge of my lid in through here. So I just picked up the yellow and the, that light yellow color. I want this to kind of pop out and look a little bit three dimensional. So right above this shadow, I'm gonna just bring this out just a little bit more um, farther out into my background. So that way it looks like that part kind of pops out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna kind of pull this light highlight along the edge of my lid. So something like this. I'll probably put a little bit brighter of a highlight on my on the edges of these as well, but this is just kind of steering me in the right direction right now. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on my handle piece too. So again, just that light yellow in through here and just giving myself this bit of a highlight on the top side, top left kind of side of this piece. I'll do the same thing up here in through the top of here. Maybe this gets a little bit 
kind of further down. And again, if yours doesn't blend into that base coat, you can pick that up and um, work it into it just a little bit, maybe on this back side in through here, maybe a touch down in through here. So I'm really just kind of looking to see where I want these highlights. I think I want a little bit of a highlight in through here as well to indicate that this front side of this handle is perhaps catching a little bit of light too. So right now I'm just kind of working with the remnants on my brush. I didn't, I haven't reloaded for a little while now. And then I'm also gonna put a little bit down here on the, on the um, base down in through here. So I actually picked up the light yellow plus a bit of my mid-tone because on here, I don't know if that, I don't think that would be quite as bright as the tips. So I have the mid-tone tan plus the light yellow on my brush right now, and I'm just gonna kind of streak in a couple of little highlights over here on this left-hand side and get it to kind of blend in a little bit in that center area, put a little bit on this edge. I'll also amp up this edge highlight in a second too, but right now just kind of giving myself the, the information where I want it all to, to be created. So while this is kind of drying for a second, I'm gonna start my decorative element. I'm gonna put my um, my mid-tone, my mid-tone plus the light yellow on my brush. And I'm gonna also use a touch of water on my brush because I want this to have a nice fluidity to it. Um, I'm going to have mine kind of this scrolly type of line. You can certainly draw yours out with your chalk or pencil or something, whatever um, works for you. I'm going to start over here on the left hand side and just kind of give myself a little bit of a, and I'm using the water and the, um, the lighter mixture so I so I can kind of control it and if it goes, I, I have the op opportunity to kind of um, change it if I need to because I'm not um, using such a firm kind of color to it. So I'm just kind of utilizing my own thoughts to create this nice decorative element, element here. I'm reloading my brush with my rust, my light yellow, and a little bit of water. You can have this going up as high up the um, lantern as you want. You can have it as shallow as you want. You can have it looking like it was handmade or machine made, whatever kind of works for you. And then I'm just gonna kind of um, trail this off up into here. Once I've got it on there, then I can certainly amp it up and make it brighter or darker, or whatever works for me. So I just picked up a little bit more of the light yellow and I'm going to um, make a little bit of highlights on here. So I'm just kind of utilizing maybe um, a, like a streaking type of effect on them on this top left hand um, corner. You, As I'm going towards this right hand side, I don't necessarily want it to be as bright. So I picked up the light yellow plus the mid-tone. And this is just allowing me to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then once I've got, you know, that on there, I can put a shadowy type of tone to it. So I can wash and dry my brush and I can pick up just the burnt sienna. So if I pick up just the burnt sienna, I can utilize that on a portion of this swirly um, decor decorative um, element in order to show that some of this metallic type of color might be taking on a little bit darker of a tone because it's on the other side of the um, of the lamp. And then I can pick up a tiny bit of black and do these little shadowy areas underneath some of these um, pieces of this, uh, of these three dimensional um, pieces that are on the, on this decorative element. If my light source is over to the left, I can put a little shadow on the right side of these little elements. So just doing these um, little tiny nuances will make pieces like this really pop out and look a little bit more realistic. You can, you know, again, make them look really dramatic and have those highlights and those shadows very evident, or you can do it in a, in a more subtle fashion. So wherever your comfort zone is, you take it into, into that, into that 
area. I'm gonna now wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a couple more bright highlights on um, the tips of these. So now I'm gonna use that yellow, that light yellow plus white on my brush, and I'm really just gonna pop in some uber bright highlights right at the at the tips of these tight of these areas, especially on the left hand side, that I want to pop out a little bit more. You can even use just white at this point um, to make these extra bright little shiny pieces to your to your um, to your lantern. You don't want to go overboard and you don't want to put it everywhere, but you definitely can put a little a little splash of the, the brightness in a couple of strategic spots, especially leaning more towards that left hand side. And maybe a little bit down here on this piece and through here. And then I would just again kind of sit and fiddle with it. Well, I'd let it dry for a minute and then kind of see how these highlights and shadows um, settled and if there was anything more that I'd want that I want to do with it I certainly would um, but we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with this small brush so once you've got all of your decorative elements and you've made any little adjusting things that you feel are necessary you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. Um, I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom right on this one using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very sweet, romantic, magical kind of painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.